Is God's purpose for marriage purely to procreate? If so, if you choose not to have children, are you not fulfilling God's will? Okay, so if I were to ask you, what do you think marriage represents, what would you say? Think about it for a second. Those that are watching online, think for a second. What is marriage supposed to represent? Well, I'll give you a pointer. It's found in Ephesians chapter 5. Now, there are lots of great passages where you can read and learn about marriage. Lots of great passages. Uh, 1 Peter 3 is a good one. Jesus taught some great things about marriage. Uh, but Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 33. So it's kind of easy to remember, 22, 33. So those 11 verses give, give a beautiful picture, a beautiful description of marriage, representing Christ and the church. So husbands, we have in the back of our mind as Christian men, we have in the back of our mind the desire to be Christ-like to our wife and to our families. We should have the mindset, we should have as a backdrop for our marriage relationship that we want to be gracious, that we want to be kind, that we want to lead with honor, that we want to, and we could go on and on. Some things are propping into your guys' minds right now, into the minds of men right now, because the Lord gives us insights on how to, how to lead in our marriage and how to be a blessing to our spouse. Why? Because he wants us to look like he does to the church. Because he loves the church a whole bunch. So much so that he laid down his life for the church. That's how much Christ loves us. As a matter of fact, a good word to describe the uh, mindset that men should have in marriage in order to represent Christ would be this word, and it's not going to come on the screen, but you might want to capture it and jot it down. It's sacrifice, to sacrifice. Uh, it, it says there in Ephesians chapter 5 that he gave himself up for her, her being us, the church. So sacrificing. So when the Lord put this on my heart when we were first married, we, we've shared many times I was terrible at marriage when we first got married. And when the Lord put this on my heart, I wanted to, I wanted to model to Dawn and show Dawn sacrifice. I wanted, I wanted to give to her the type of love that perhaps she didn't get from her dad with, with it being conditional and with the whole pain of the divorce and stuff. And I wanted her to be able to see and understand unconditional love. And guys, I would tell you, I think this is from the Lord, that our wives need to see and they need to understand unconditional love. And dads, guess what? Your daughters need to see it and understand it as well. That doesn't mean that you don't lead them. That doesn't mean that you don't discipline, but it does mean that they know that you love them, that you care for them deeply, that you'll help them, that you'll sacrifice to make their life better. And so that's a good thing. Now, ladies, what would it be for you? So if marriage is to represent Christ in the church, what would it be for the ladies? Well, in different passages, the word that is used for the lady, the, the wife in the marriage relationship is submit. Now, quite often that word submit, especially in today's world, is not thought very highly of. As a matter of fact, the political left would, would despise that word. They would say that that's a horrible word. I am woman, hear me roar. And uh, that doesn't fulfill your deepest needs. Girls, that doesn't, Don, Don can speak to it perhaps, that doesn't fulfill your deepest needs. What does is to support the mission, which is what submit means, is to support the mission. Now you say, what mission? The mission God has given your husband. You say, but I'm not married. Then the mission God has given you as head of the house for your, for, uh, for your family. Find vision, find direction, find life, find grace, find love, find compliments, find encouragement, find sacrifice, all the things, and then submit to it. Honor it, support that mission. And in doing so, you'll understand the purpose in marriage. So God's purpose is to show the world what Christ in the church looks like. So, having, what if we can't have children was in the question as well, right? It says if you choose not to have children. If you choose not to have not children. Are you not God's will? Well, um, that, that's a good question. I don't know exactly how to answer that. I could go both ways on answering that. But let me just say that the Bible says, and we joked about it a second ago with the dedication of the children, uh, that children are a blessing from the Lord. And our joke is, is be sure you remind yourself of that when they're being uh, like their dad or like their mom. <laughs> You catch that later. <laughs> but to remind yourself that they are a blessing. And uh, the one who wrote that in the scripture had many, many children. So I'm sure he had to remind himself over and over and over again that they're a blessing. So my thought is, is if children are a blessing, why wouldn't I want to be blessed? Now, perhaps there are health issues. Perhaps, perhaps there's an ongoing uh, genetic disorder, perhaps, and you don't want to do that. Well, then I would say, uh, entertain the idea of adopting. The reason why 
is because we're all adopted ourselves. I don't know if you've thought about that before, but every single one of us in this room have been adopted. We've been adopted into the family of God. And there are thousands and millions of children worldwide that would love, they are on their knees praying right now to a God that they don't know that well. And they're asking God to give them a Christian home to grow up in. And I would just encourage you to consider that. This is big in our church because of the fact that, that I believe adoption is a huge thing. So that's why we have Hope Fort Worth based out of our church. Some of you are connected to that. It's an awesome ministry helping to get kids in foster care adopted here in Tarrant County and the five surrounding counties. And that's why we're big with a group that's, that's risen up out of our church, a ministry called Be Loved, sponsoring children in Ethiopia who have no surviving relatives as a result of HIV AIDS. And that's why we're sponsoring those kids, and you can do so as well. Capital B space, capital L, loved. And you can go on, hit the sponsor button, and you'll, you'll love sponsoring these kids. So we believe that every child deserves a family. And the best place for children to grow up are in Christian families. Families that love God are going to take those kids to church, are going to help those church understand the goodness, help those kids understand the goodness of the Lord in church life. And we believe that that's so important. So that's why we operate that way. And then I was going to say, and then, of course, you have to seek the Lord about that. Um, you know, the question was, are you not fulfilling God's will? Will you fulfill God's will when you seek him and find out what his will is for you? And so always, of course, ask the Lord. You know, ask the Lord about your marriage and ask the Lord once you're married, do you want us to have children? How many children do you want us to have? Which was really a big thing for us because we, we both come from families of three. Jeff's the oldest three. I'm the middle of three. And we have five children, and our parents were just astounded that we would even want that many children. And uh, every time I got pregnant, it would be like, again? We're having another child? You know the obvious question, do yeah. you know what's causing this? <laughs> no, I don't. Explain it to me. <laughs> Come on, Grandma and Grandpa, while the grandkids are here, explain it. That's Jeff's family that would ask that question. Um, <laughs> Anyway, but yes, ask the Lord, seek the Lord about that, because that's a big issue, and it is very important. And I love it that as the Lord has, uh, has kind of re-envisioned us as far as uh, fostering and adopting, that the Lord's putting it in the hearts of our young couples even, that they're talking about, we're going to have a child or two, and then we're going to adopt, or maybe we're going to adopt first and then have a child, or we're just going to adopt. I love it that the Lord's put that into the heart of our church, because you know what? We have the hope. The hope for the world is in Jesus. And when we get to invest in the life of a child, that affects their eternity. We're investing for all eternity. And I think that's so exciting to see how investing in children can change this world, can change the culture that we live in.